The other day, one of my good friends sent me an Instagram reel. It was very serious, very dark and moody. It was of this young man who's making oatmeal, and he said, If you want to be a director, take your camera, shoot something, put your name on it as director, and then go forth into the world. You are a filmmaker, whatever, however it was put. And I really appreciate that she did that because what she was trying to do, she was trying to motivate me. And this is even before, like, my last video went up. I guess she could just sense it, but she was trying to motivate me to just grab the camera and just start shooting and go forth into the world. So, hey, I'm shooting and I'm going forth. Nigga, get on your job. Tell them haters, get on your job. Nigga, motivation. You know, honestly, y'all are about to be sick of me. <laughs> Oh, you know, I was supposed to go to the gym this morning. I say that in every video, right? I was supposed to go to the gym, but I didn't go to the gym. Instead, I got up late, made myself a sensible breakfast, and then just kind of putzed around. Now I'm on the clock, I'm working. Snack time, so I made oatmeal. I've also got some yogurt here and water. So even if I don't make it to the gym, at least I'm eating. <laughs> eating responsibly <laughs> so hey and i will be slapping directed by on this video so i'm not a huge like television person honestly i never really have been i mean you know growing up you know i had my shows i like to watch but i can honestly say that i've never really been that big of a tv person I've always leaned more toward movies. I say this and I make this distinction because since being out here, the majority of the people that I've run into who are either working within the industry or who are trying to break into the industry as screenwriters, they want to do so on the TV side. Everyone is obsessed with, you know, uh, writing specs and, and writing pilots and creating Bibles and pitch decks and all this stuff. You know, they're, they're thinking of like story engines and they, you know, they want to create something that will last like, you know, five seasons minimum. And they want to be on prestige networks like AMC or HBO or like whatever. I don't have none, none of those dreams. I don't, none of that shit. I don't care. That's not me. I am writing feature films, feature length spec scripts because I want to make movies to be screened on AMC but on AMC theatrical screens, not AMC the network. <laughs> and look, you know, everything, everything has its place. Everyone has their path. Like, I'm not saying that I would not write for television because if, if an opportunity to write for TV opened up and I could see, you know, that that's certainly a viable path to writing for features. I mean, look at someone like Misha Green. Congratulations to Misha. You know, she's celebrated uh, television writer. You know, she was uh, one of the co-creators and writers for Lovecraft Country, among other things. But now she's like making the move into features. You know, her feature Mother starring Jennifer Lopez is coming out soon. A feature that she wrote a long time ago called Sunflower is coming out. She's going to be directing Sunflower. And I think that's awesome just for the simple fact that like, you know, like that script that script has been around for a minute, and it's the script that she's going to make her directorial debut with. So it just goes to show that nothing is truly dead in this godforsaken industry. But in any case, just with the way things are going lately as far as TV is concerned, TV series are being canceled, like, left and right. Like, it's, it's craziness. You know, again, I don't watch a lot of TV, so a lot of these shows, I'm not watching, personally. Like, it's just like, okay... I know they exist because I see the conversation on social media or I see the advertising. It's just like, yeah, you know, you see commercials for these shows. It's like, oh, OK. But yeah, you know, I'm seeing like all sorts of reports about TV shows getting canceled, shows getting canceled after one season and not because of like, you know, poor viewership or whatever. Or shows that are like completed, like they, they shot like the first season, but like whatever streamer or network has decided that they don't want the show. And so now... The producers are shopping the completed show around to like other networks and streamers. It's just wild. And so a lot of my writer peeps, you know, they're freaking out. And I'm talking about like everyone. I'm talking, you know, from the folks who are, you know, trying to break in and, you know, hoping to, to, to rise in these writers rooms to the folks who were in the writers rooms, the showrunners and, you know, the experienced writers, like all these people are just like, what is going on? 
You know, there used to be, they all talk about how there used to be this path to where you could work your way up, you know, in different writers' rooms, on different shows and everything, and finally get to that position to where you're a showrunner, where you can, you know, pitch your own show and, and whatever. And apparently that's that's not a thing anymore. And look, shit is changing on the feature side as well. It really doesn't seem like the old ways of kind of like breaking in are viable anymore. And so what are a lot of people doing? They're creating, they're shooting their own stuff. I think about this movie that everyone was crazy over, been going crazy over, Skinner Inc. It's a low budget horror film about some kids that are like being tortured by some demon in a house. Personally, it's not not my flavor. Like, you know, I'm reading the description and some of the, you know, shit that goes down and I'm just like, yeah, you know, that's not entertaining to me personally but people seem to be into it and um through a series of kind of like mishaps or whatever <laughs> like uh it got pirated all over the internet and was able to secure like a theatrical release like i don't know how many theaters it's in right now but i think at its height it was in like 600 700 theaters and so you know now you've got this fifteen thousand dollar movie that's making untold millions at the box office and it's, you know, director and and crew, you know, I'm sure that they are poised to do great things and just do bigger and better. So it really does, it really does feel like creating your own and trying to figure out how to get distribution, how to get it in front of an audience. It seems like that's the way to go. You know, one of the questions that I saw asked on Twitter was just like, are we, are we just going to have to start making our shit and post it on YouTube? <laughs> There was one like Debbie Downer ass person who's just like, oh, YouTube, you gotta, you know, they're very restrictive with language and sex and violence and this and that. And it's just like, well, maybe you got to work within the parameters of the, the distribution channel, the outlet, and figure out, you know, how to just use all that to your advantage. You know, they were making movies back in the 30s, you know, they were constrained by the Hayes Code and look at all the classics and everything we got from, you know, from that period, from like the 30s into the 60s or whatever it was. So there are ways that, you know, you can create and work around um, issues of censorship if that's if that's a thing. And at the same time, you know, I say shit like fuck, <laughs> you know, on my YouTube. That's probably why I don't get the, the amount of views that um, people say I should get because I do use profanity in my videos. The algorithm doesn't like that shit. Fuck, goddamn shit. Well, you know, whatever. I'll figure. I'll figure all this shit out. But in addition to like YouTube, you know, people have mentioned other, other kind of platforms. You know, like Vimeo or Tubi or whatever, whatever. Like you know, stuff's out there, and we can we can go like real old school. Like uh, you know, I'm the type of person. I'm just like, all right, can we press up some DVDs, some Blu-rays? You know, we can. All that stuff, you know, we can get made cheaply. Mock up some some artwork instead of wasting time creating pitch decks. Create my DVD art and, you know, sell out the trunk of the car. <laughs> anyway, those are my rambling thoughts on the state of the industry today. <laughs> like I said, you know, I just want to, I personally, I want to shoot. I want to create. I want to write. I want to write stuff that I can shoot so that I can get in. But yeah, that's that's what it is. So whatever. So look, baby steps. Here here we are. Baby steps. I'm shooting. I'm creating. Shout out to you, Robin, my sister and best friend. Shout out to you for sending me that that very serious Instagram reel. You know, just talking about creation. What's next for those of us either already in the industry or trying to break in? Like, what are your thoughts? What do you think? How do you think we should go about doing things? Leave your thoughts below in the comments that I promise I will one day get to and reply to. <laughs> All right, y'all, I am on the clock, so let me let me get this shit done. Directed by Jay Fingers. Suck a nigga, get on your job, if you hate and get on your job, nigga. You can look me in my eyes, see I'm ready for whatever, anything don't kill me, make me better, I ain't. See, I can, I can shoot oatmeal too.